Ah, retro collecting, you end up with things that come through the door, go straight into a box, and you never get a chance. Sometimes you never even get a chance to uh, see if the damn thing works that you've just spent money on. I'm kind of finding myself in this position where I'm getting job lots of stuff. I need something to test them in, and that's what this video is all about. Hi, and welcome to the channel. Today, I have brought down a selection of stuff from my parts bin. Now, I've got a lot of things that come through the door. I see things online and I think, oh, you know, that card's significant. I need to have that in my collection or that poor card needs rescuing. It's going for a cheap price on eBay. I'm going to buy that. And they often come in and I never get a chance to really test them or even clean them or anything. So I decided I need to remedy that somehow. So I decided to build a test frame, a retro test frame. And I was trying to think of the, the easiest way to do this to cover all of the bases. Now, you can get... Uh, ready-made test frame which are very attractive and I almost went for one of these but they're stupidly expensive and then I thought oh, I could just cut up an old uh, ATX case and make one out of that and I was on the verge of doing that and I was going to make a video about that when I spotted one of these but these are mining frames cryptocurrency mining frames and they are quite reasonably priced in fact they're pretty cheap like 15 16 quid i think and so i've got this it's, it's designed just for sort of itx and atx on modern systems and designed to hold a lot of gpus for currency mining but i thought this would be brilliant for uh, a retro testing rig so it's, it's just something that i can have permanently set up just grab it and be able to pop cards in it as they arrive benchmark them clean them up make sure they're all working and that kind of thing super easy to put together right next up is the motherboard so thinking about a motherboard for a test frame i wanted one with as wide a variety of slots as possible so i chose this it's a slot a motherboard that came with a pentium 2 celeron 333 megahertz it's got early agp pci and isa it's the board itself is a create LX-18 motherboard. I believe it was made by a company called Zyder Technologies and the fastest processor speed it takes out of the box is the 333 MHz. So yeah, I think as long as um, I keep the system the same, it doesn't really matter what the processor is and the memory as long as it's consistent for all the testing I do and then I can maybe build up a little library of benchmarks and things so I know which cards perform well in relative to each other so I know which ones to choose for future builds. The CPU and the heatsink and the fan were full of gunk so I decided to give them a bit of a clean, put some nice new thermal paste on there and put it all back together. Now while this test frame isn't designed for testing CPUs, this is quite an interesting CPU in its own right. This Celeron is based on the Mendocino core and that's a very interesting chip. At the time Intel put it out, it was also the, it was the first Celeron to include on-die cache. The previous model didn't have any at all. And Intel kind of shot themselves in the foot because not only did it have on-die cache, it also turned out to be extremely overclockable just by increasing the front side bus. So it's something simple to do. And then you had a scenario where everybody could go out and buy these cheap budget Mendocino based Celerons and overclock them to outperform the flagship Pentium 2 equivalent. So Intel ended up with a situation where their budget model was a better deal than their flagship model and also outperformed it in many cases. So in the future, I think it'll be a fun little video uh, to come back just to visit this test frame, just to have a mess about with the processor and just see how fast it can go. Getting the board securely on was a bit of a pain because it doesn't have holes that line up to a baby AT motherboard. So I got three posts on, so it's kind of supported down the left side and in the center at the top. So the, the, the bit where you're putting the cards in is probably fairly well supported. Uh, I probably need to get some, some kind of plastic standoffs or something just so that when you push down the board doesn't flex. Uh, in the, in the meantime, I've just got some posts kind of on upside down at the bottom, so it just gives it a bit of support when you push down on it. Um, that'll have to do for now, but I probably will end up drilling some holes in the bottom and putting some proper posts underneath all of the screw points on the board at some point in the future. 
I'm just going to stick a couple of random cards in here just to make sure that everything fits and indeed it seems to be reasonably secure and easy to slot cards into. So there is a place to permanently fix a power supply onto this frame which is good. It's got a choice here because I can either use AT or ATX PSU on this motherboard, though I've got this random ATX PSU that came with a, a batch of random crap that I got a little while ago and I don't really have a use for it so I'm going to use this and that's one of the good things about this is because the the PSU and everything will be bolted to this frame you'll just be able to pick it up and it'll all be there ready to go whereas previously I either had to crack open a, an existing system and swap cards and drivers and stuff which was a pain or just get out a uh, a motherboard, a power supply and all the bits and pieces and stick them together on on a table. So this is really going to make it quite quick and easy just to, to test stuff out which is it's going to make things a lot easier I think. God damn this is the shiniest PSU I think I've ever ever worked with. You almost need sunglasses just to look at it. Get our nice cleaned Celeron 333 back in its slot and get the fan hooked up and sort out some of this cabling from the power supply. I never really thought about that. Cable management and this thing is going to be all over the place so I might have to stick that down a little bit. The whole project almost came unstuck when it came to memory because I need DDR1 for this thing and I don't have much of that at all. Um, I did run into a problem when I was uh, trying the memory which I didn't film where it, the, the stuff that I have in this bag here, DDR1, didn't work at all. So uh, I ended up stealing some from another system and ordering some more online. So that will be sorted when that arrives. So I don't really plan to do any testing right now. I just want to get it up and running. So I just grabbed the first graphics card that came to hand, which is uh, an old Cirrus Logic one megabyte card so we'll just pop that in there and then I think we've got our memory in there and we're just about ready to rock. Just notice there's no CMOS battery in there better pop one of those in before we go any further. So now it's really just a case of getting all the bits and pieces and the peripherals that we need to fire up so we're gonna put a floppy on there. I was thinking about whether or not I really needed an optical drive on there, but I thought I'll put it on because it just gives you a quick and easy way to add any extra benchmark programs or anything that you might want to at a future date. Uh, so it's just a case of hooking up all the ribbon cables and trying to get it to boot. Almost forgot the frame comes with this nice little power switch, which you can just pop onto the power header. Um, it's just a nice little touch, it just saves you having to find a screwdriver to short the pins every time you want to start it up. So that's the floppy connected, the Windows 98 boot disk in. And so the first test on this test frame is to see whether the stuff that I bought for the test frame actually works. So let's fire her up and see. So it's booting okay, which is good. So I think the next thing to do is to find a place to try and secure these these drives onto the frame somehow. There's no screw holes that come close to matching and the ones that are there are in awkward positions that don't allow the drives to fit. So what I'm going to do with this is I've got some of these little sticky pads and I'm just going to put a lot of them on there and stick them over towards the edge where they're easily accessible and hopefully that'll be strong enough. I'll, I'll just be aware that that's all that's holding them in place so I'll be careful um, but I think I want them kind of attached to the frame as well just to make the whole thing just easier to access. And now that the drives are in place we can get them cabled in. I think for most of the testing I'm going to be doing on here, Windows 98 is going to be the weapon of choice, covering real DOS and Windows 3D stuff as well. For the hard drive on this, there's just an IDE compact flash adapter, which is just going to allow me to keep on reloading the image 
over the top so I don't have to wipe drivers and things every time a new piece of kit arrives that I want to take a look at. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to put on here is I wasn't terribly happy about just having the single AT keyboard connector. I would rather have uh, just a PS2 connector for both a keyboard and a mouse rather than using some of my AT keyboards and serial mice which are probably better used with different systems. So I've got this card here, it's got two USB ports and a PS2 for the mouse and the keyboard. It's a PCI card so that will live permanently on the system as well and that will allow me to quickly transfer files using USB and also just use any old uh, PS2 mouse and keyboard or indeed USB mouse and keyboard. It's all running pretty sweetly so far so this is just a, a bare Windows 98 install now, no drivers, no nothing. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump a load of benchmarking software on there so things like 3D Mark and uh, Phil's benchmarking suite for, from Phil's computer labs so that I've always got stuff on there to use to test the cards as they come in and then once I've got this particular image set up on this compact flash card I'll make a hard copy of it somewhere so that I can just keep reloading it as and when required. And there you go, ready to rock and roll, ready to benchmark all of those rusting cards that I've got piled up all over the place so that's pretty much it up and running I guess I just need to tidy up the case a little bit now. I guess one thing I should do at this point and that's check that all of the slots actually work because I've got the variety of the three different kinds of slot here so I really need to get an ISA card, a PCI card and an AGP card, but I've already done PCI and test them out just to make sure that all the different kinds of slots are actually working properly. So that all worked out okay, AGP, ISA, PCI, all working as expected. And now for the portability test. How easy is it to just disconnect this thing, pick it up, take it away and stick it on the shelf until it's needed again? And the answer is super easy. That just about wraps it up for this video. I'm pretty pleased with what I've built here it's going to make it a lot easier I'm going to start working through those cards so I can now do videos where I can take all of my ISA graphics cards and compare them and build up some kind of spreadsheet so that I can see how all of my cards fall in the hierarchy I can test out the different sound cards that I've got and just generally um get a grip on my pile of retro stuff so i hope you've enjoyed watching this video and if you did it'd be great if you would consider giving me a thumbs up or subscribing and thanks very much for watching and i hope to see you on the channel again thank you very much goodbye